Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's Fuji Friday, I do have a couple of news stories that I do want to cover. So let's go ahead and get right into it. The first one that I want to cover is the remote Fuji camera app. It's going to version 4.0.2, at least for the Apple version. For the Android users, you're still at 4.0.0, so you're going to have to wait for this particular update. But it did promise some bug fixes and increased performance, although that seems to be a little subjective right now. There has been a lot of reports that you kind of need to play around Around with your Bluetooth settings or your wireless settings. A lot of people are reporting that if you turn off your Bluetooth, you do see an increase in performance, but that's something you're going to have to test. I personally don't use the Fuji remote camera app because it's just not useful enough for me to actually use it. But for anybody who is using it, if you do see an increased performance and there's something that you have to tweak, definitely leave in the comments below so that you can share it with the rest of the community. I for one have been on record saying that Fuji Films really needs to rewrite the entire application to make it significantly more functional and I still have that same stance. The next item that I want to talk about is Capture One just came out with its latest upgrade which is version 12.1 and it's promising better image quality for Fuji Film files so that is something that's kind of interesting. I've already downloaded it and I have installed it and I have looked through some of my pictures because I am in the progress of moving away from Adobe Cloud to Capture One and for the most part I might see a slight improvement in details but honestly like I'm not really even sure because the files were already pretty good in the first place but they are saying there is an improvement so if you're interested in Capture One definitely download that software it's a good chance to do it also the previous update which I didn't cover which is version 12.0.4 that actually added a whole lot of lens support for the Fuji film systems so most of the lenses are now supported so that's really great news for Capture One users I have been using it for quite a bit and it's been very useful to have all of those lens profiles with me before moving on to the next item though I do want to share with you my progress going from Adobe Lightroom to Capture One and what I have noticed so far is both applications are fantastic. They're really great. They'll take care of you, but they work in different ways. One of the things that I have noticed is that if I take the same image and I edit it in Lightroom and then I edit it in Capture One or vice versa, I come out with different edits. There's really not one time that I can think of where when I edited an image, they both came out looking about the same. They're both very drastically different. And I'm not sure if that's what other people see. I would love to hear your comments on that. If you have both softwares, when you edit an image, are they drastically different? Because they are for me. What I'm currently seeing right now is it's much easier to get an image with a lot of dynamic range from Lightroom. But in Capture One, it's kind of hard to get a high dynamic range image, kind of like an HDR image. But it's very easy to actually make a punchy image in Capture One. It just does a really good job of highlighting shadows and highlights and it just makes the image really punchy. Whereas in Lightroom for me, it's very easy to make a flat and smooth image, but it's a little bit harder to make a punchy image in which I have to try a little bit harder. At least that's what I have been seeing as I'm editing through both of those image. I am going to be moving away from Adobe permanently, so it's something that I'm just going to have to learn through, but I would love to hear your feedback on this as I you know learn both of these systems because they are quite drastically different the features in them just aren't in the same place and there's definitely a lot of features that are distinct either to Lightroom or to Capture One so it's been very difficult actually to know which image I like I mean all images are good it's just that when you edit your image and they come out differently now you have to decide it's like is this one better or is that one better and I really don't want to keep both so I'm definitely going to be moving away from Adobe and keeping Capture One so let me know your opinions because I would love to hear them the last item that I do want to discuss is also about moving away from the Adobe Cloud which is Adobe Premiere Pro because a lot of the cameras that I'm using right now is for video and I've been using Premiere Pro for a very long time to edit all of my videos. I actually have quite a few mini series on my channel about that and I've really enjoyed using it but like I said I want to move away from the monthly subscriptions into a standalone application and I've been using DaVinci Resolve 16 and what I've found out so far is that Resolve 16 is very powerful. 
I thought I would need to upgrade to Resolve Pro for $300, but it turned out the free version can do absolutely everything that I need that Premiere Pro is doing for me right now. So it is a super powerful editor. It's something that you really have to try if you're using Premiere Pro. You would think that the free version would be very limited, but it is not. It is full featured. It is really powerful. If you're using Premiere Pro, you have to check out DaVinci Resolve 16 because you could be spending money that you otherwise don't have to because all of the features that I currently use in Premiere Pro, I actually have in the free version. Now, it is a beta version. There are some things that aren't working correctly. It's just that with those bugs, the workarounds to them are a little bit annoying. So I'm not going to be replacing Premiere Pro until it gets out of beta. So that has been a very pleasant surprise. Unfortunately, I'm not really used to the tool yet. And some of the features are kind of hard to use. So I'm trying to work my way through it. It definitely is slowing me down. And as a person who's creating a lot of content on YouTube, trying to learn two pieces of new software while trying to keep up with content creation on a weekly basis has been quite difficult. But I think it's well worth it to get away from that monthly subscription. And, you know, I'm just glad to report that both Resolve and also Capture One has been working out really well for me. If you're a person that's looking to cut the cord with Adobe, definitely check out those two products because they have been working really well for me. If you have any questions about that, definitely leave in the comments below. Once I get more familiar with it, I think I will do a few tutorials on DaVinci Resolve 16. I mostly do that because it forces me to learn the program really well, but I look forward to doing a few of those tutorials and I'll keep you up to date. Anyhow, that's all I have this week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next Friday.